some of my earliest memories are getting brought in by my father to the machine shop. I grew up watching my father lose himself in projects in a good way to find solutions that might not be obvious when you first look at the problem. Like that's a journey I really like going on. And this garage, it's a safe, calm, and enjoyable place to spend hours sometimes working on a piece that maybe no one will ever notice, but I will know I made it in that particular way for a very particular reason. And I arrived at a solution that I never saw coming, but really hit the nail on the head. All the men in my family are engineers, and I am the odd one who came out to California to be a writer. And somewhere in my 30s, I discovered that I missed what was a part of my family life growing up, which was making things, fixing things. And a series of maybe accidents led to uh, an old Porsche 911. I'm still not an engineer, I'm still not a mechanic, but I have discovered a path to those things through this place. Just to be clear, there are professionals that have done a lot of the work on my car, but you know, there's an experience with the car that's exclusively my domain. It doesn't sit at a race shop somewhere waiting for me to take it to the track. It's going with me to the grocery store all the time. It's going everywhere I go. And it's really integrated into my life because of that. And the garage is part of that integration. I'm Jack Olson. I am a uh, screenwriter here in Los Angeles, and you are in the garage I put together for my uh, 1972 Porsche 911. It's called the 12 gauge garage. I call it that because of the thickness of the steel and in the industrial cabinets uh, that I rehabbed to put in here. It also evokes kind of the simplicity and durability that I hoped to bring to what normally is just a box where people keep their Christmas ornaments and other stuff. When you're working in a 20 foot by 20 foot space, the utilization of that space becomes incredibly important. How to maximize every square foot. So here, I wanted 10 different work surfaces I could put in the place. I had to look at how I worked, and within the confines of a small space, I wanted access to everything without putting everything on wheels. I found guides to hot rod shops back in the 50s based on a similar space. It started to take shape, and, and that meant I had to be able to build something one day, tear it down two weeks later because I realized it made it so I couldn't do three other things. I was lucky to find a place that was buying up old machine shop stock, taught myself to weld so I could cut them up, put them back together in different ways. I'm surprised constantly by a few things. Having worked on it intensely for a few months and then over time, how it really does feel finished now. Where everything landed works pretty well for me. The, the last thing I added was the lift, which certainly felt like the craziest thing I was adding. It is not an automotive lift. I do have a father who's an engineer and a brother who's an engineer, and we went through every possible failure scenario we could come up with, but I'm using a hydraulic lift table designed for industrial use. It has a slightly different set of design parameters than an automotive lift. In many ways, it's much more durable, and worked out how I could sink it into the floor very big decision to cut through the concrete that had been poured in 1925, but made it work. Once you have it, you go from where you were, which is to think, oh, three times a year, I wish I had a lift, to like three times a day I'm putting the car up. Partly because it's just awesome to watch it go up, but partly because now it makes any work on the car much easier. In putting the place together, I knew that I was gonna be doing some metal fabrication I have to do some welding, other kinds of metal cutting, metal grinding. Oddly, the garage has sort of come together in a vintage sort of way, but partly because I can't afford a brand new Milwaukee grinder. I can't afford the kind of drill press I wanted, but I could find the ones that were made in the 70s and I could restore them. And the nice thing about a lot of the equipment from that era is it's massively overbuilt. That kind of machinery is easy to restore. It's very satisfying to work with. When I say 12 gauge garage, it is stout, reliable equipment. It gets it done 
and you just don't want to have to pick it up and carry it somewhere. At the highest level of motorsports, there's a long tradition of expensive efforts to harness aerodynamics. I don't have any of that. I got some ride height sensors at high speeds, that ride height gets compressed down. If the aerodynamic piece isn't working well, I can see in the data I get from those sensors, if it's working so well on, say, the back of the car that it's lifting up the front of the car, I can see that as well endlessly fascinating to kind of lose yourself in this stuff and then the fun of it is you take it to the track in uh, more dynamic conditions and turns what's happening and now you've entered into uh, a realm where even the wind tunnel wouldn't show you same data and again with my DIY setup if a piece isn't working I can throw it away and it's an entertaining pursuit this place is a space I created for myself. And it's a place where I can take a project in the few hours I can get away from the chaos of my daily life and have a calm place to get something done. That's medicine for the soul. I took stuff that was broken, was able to see through to how it could be chopped up, put back together into something completely different. And that process not only played some role in transforming me, I learned a whole new set of skills working on it, but it's the journey that's meaningful. It's, it's taking something, taking your own limitations, and finding what you can do with that. My old 1972 911 is still neck and neck with some of the best modern cars made at a track like Willow Springs. I could go buy the newest, best Porsche, but that's not what I have. I've got the old simple one, so what can we do with that to go out there and in the right circumstances, sometimes beat what they're able to do. Everyone would love to have 10,000 square feet and five huge lifts. If you've got a house, you might have a one car or a two car garage. And this place speaks to what can be done with a two car garage. If I had more money, if I had more time, I might do it differently. I wanted to get to the projects I was gonna do here, but this is a lot that got done with not too much money in a 20 foot by 20 foot space. And if it helps other people see what they can do with theirs, that's fantastic.